Hi everyone. I wanted to make a quick video to show you how you can enable silent authentication when you deploy your custom copilot on a portal or on your company's intranet site. Uh, for many internal facing use cases, you might want to authenticate the user who is interacting with uh, your copilot so that you can capture the logged in users details either for uh, auditing reasons or for customizing their chat experience. So in this demo today, I will show you how you can enable single sign-on uh, for your Copilot Studio bot using uh, Microsoft Entra. First, I will show you the link to the documentation. So I'll put this in the description. This explains through um, all the steps that are needed, all the prerequisites in order to set this up. Um, there's also a uh, sample HTML page that we have created uh, that you can use to quickly get started. So for today's demo, I'll use this and I'll show you exactly what configuration you have to make in order to get this working. So I'll put this link in the, in the description as well. So before we start with um, configuration, let me show you how the code in this HTML page works. So we have three key steps um, in order to get this to work. Um, so we have the user who logs into uh, the internet site or the portal that uh, you're using where you have embedded the uh, custom canvas. So the first time when user logs in, it will ask user uh, to provide their credentials. Once user enters their credentials, um, it will, the custom canvas uh, site, the intranet site will send those credentials to Microsoft Entra to authenticate the user. The custom canvas, which is also embedded within, within this site, will intercept the request and use that token um, the, and send it to Copilot Studio sign in topic uh, over direct line. So the Copilot Studio sign in topic is the topic that's used to authenticate the user. So using the token that is sent by the custom canvas, um, the Copilot Studio platform uses the sign in topic to authenticate the user for the bot using my Microsoft Entra. So in this in these three steps, your site is getting authenticated as well as your bot is getting authenticated uh, as part of the same process. Um, so this eliminates the need for user to click on that login button within, within the uh, chat bot. Um, in this case, once your user has been authenticated, they should be able to log into your site and as well as um, start using the chat pod that's embedded on the on this site. So now let's look at the configuration here. So I have this um, index.html uh, open. Um, here's the uh, file that I have uh, created. Um, in order to get this to work uh, before even we start editing this HTML file, we need to set up uh, two app registrations. The first app registration is for the uh, intranet site. So if you remember the diagram I had, uh, we need to create one app registration that will allow intranet site to authenticate the user. And then the second app registration is for the custom canvas um, in order to allow, uh, 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 in order to authenticate the user uh, within the chatbot. So I'll, this is the uh, app registration I've set up for the intranet site. So in this case, um, you just have to click on authentication and provide the link or the URL to your website where you have embedded the chatbot. Um, you can set the uh, new client secret here. And then in terms of API permissioning, you need to add these three um, uh, permissions and 
uh, give them the uh, admin consent. Uh, and then uh, once that's done, the first app setup is completed. So this is the app setup that we are going to use uh, for the uh, portal or the intranet site. Now, we also need to set up uh, another app registration, which will be used by the bot to authenticate the user. So in this case, it's the same process. So you can see within authentication, we are uh, providing the uh, redirect URL. Um, and then we have the client ID and client secret here. Um, and then in terms of API permissioning, it's the same three uh, permissions that I've added here. And one additional step here would be uh, to create expose an API. So in this case, you have to create a scope. So you can see here, um, you can click on add a scope um, and then just create a scope, give it a unique name. So in this case, you can see this scope. Um, what this scope does is it creates relationship between this app registration and the app registration we have on the uh, for the cust uh, for the internet site, so it allows the uh, app registration that's being used by the internet site uh, to call uh, this specific application. So in this case, you are setting up the scope, and then uh, you are adding the client ID. So client ID of the app registration, app registration that is set up for the site. So you just need to copy this and then click on add client application and add it here. So once you do that, both uh, the registrations are app registrations are completed. Next, you would go to this index.html um, file. Uh, within the first script here, uh, which calls the um, configuration uh, to authenticate the user, you would replace, uh, you would add the client ID from the app registration that's used by the intranet site. So this is the one you can see here, this is being added here. And then over here, you add the tenant ID for, for the same, from the same app registration, which is used for the site. Next, uh, you can scroll down here and over here um, within the main function, we need to add the direct line um, URL. So this you can get by going to your co-pilot, clicking on settings, going to channels. And then if you click on mobile app, um, this is the token endpoint URL that you need to copy. Uh, and then you just add it within this main functions. So once you do that, um, your configuration is complete. You can save this file and then um, host it uh, in order to test it. So in this case, what I've done is I have uh, hosted it here. So you can see now if I copy this URL, I'll open a new window and I can show you if I log into Power Platform, I'm logged in as uh, logged in as Dynamics Microsoft user, this is the username. So as soon as I launch this website, what it's doing is it's validating or authenticating using my credentials because I'm already logged in. And you can see the site is authenticated. So it has um, all my uh, information. Uh, so this is the name that, that's, uh, that, was, that I showed on the Power Platform site. So that's the username that I'm using. And then the bot is also getting authenticated. Um, and you can see uh, the user information here. Uh, it knows uh, my username, it has my email, and any um, user details that you need to provide to your bot can be made uh, available uh, once you authenticate the user. Um, if you launch the 
demo site, um, you can see uh, it, it is going to prompt you uh, to authenticate by clicking on the login button. Uh, same way if I open a different window um, and if I log into make.powerapps.com. So in this case, you can see I'm logged in as a uh, different user. So I am logged in as Parag Desai. And if I copy that same uh, website link where I posted the bot, so I'm gonna copy the same link on this browser. And if I go to that site, it's going to authenticate uh, the site. It's logged in. Now I'm logged in as Parag Desai. And you can see, again, it's able to, uh, the bot is also getting authenticated and it's pulling the right information. So this is how you can quickly set up single sign-on where you are authenticating the channel uh, which is which in this case would be your internet site and also authenticating uh, the user who's logged into the bot. Um, so if there are any questions, uh, do let me know. I'll share the links that I have uh, shown you today in this demo. Um, hopefully this was helpful. Thanks everyone.